What's going on guys? So I am out here at the RV and I got a bit of a dilemma. So an RV equipment manufacturer that I'm sure everyone by now is familiar with has reached out to me and they wanted me to start testing some of their 12 volt refrigerators. Okay, so I, uh, I don't have a lot of experience with 12 volt refrigerators uh, other than what I've seen on dealership lots and a few of them that have been running whenever you know they have power going to the RV on dealership lots. Now I know a lot of you are probably starting to see more and more 12 volt refrigerators in RVs on dealership lots as well as perhaps in your specific RV when you purchased it. Now. The thing that I'm concerned about with doing this test is if I wanted to put one inside of our RV, I would have to remove the refrigerator that's in there. So let's talk about that and talk about some of the challenges when it comes to having a refrigerator replaced or even installed inside of an RV. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so real quickly, just to kind of set the stage on what's going on and where we're at. So we're inside of the RV, of course. We have three ACs in here. They're all 13.5 KBTU units, Coleman Quiet Series mock units. We only have one that's set to run though, and that's this one right here. The rest of them are turned off um, just to maintain temperature. I keep all the windows closed and all the blackout blinds shut as well whenever we, uh, we're not in here. But this thing is set for 82 degrees and it's currently 83 degrees and it's running. Now, if you wanna know how hot it is outside, it's actually 92 degrees with 106 degree heat index. So very impressed with how these, uh, these have been cooling and not just that, how well insulated the RV's been, um, probably largely in part due to just the standard insulation they use as well as these insulated dual pane windows. But that's not the topic of today's video. It was just something to kind of let you know what's going on, where we're at in the RV. So this is the refrigerator that came with our RV. It's a Samsung refrigerator, French door. And this thing has been working really well. We never turn it off. We have the refrigerator set at 38 degrees and the freezer set at eight degrees. We keep a bunch of water out here. We really don't keep food out here. I think I've mentioned in other videos, we want to keep the RV relatively clear of anything that could potentially attract bugs, or especially if there's some type of a power loss and we're not out here for maybe a whole day and everything melts or everything starts to thaw. And, and again, it just creates the potential for a mess. So we bring food out here as we want to cook it. And oftentimes we'll cook it before we actually bring it out here. We might just rewarm it or use the stove or something else to get something boiling or heating up like beans or whatnot. Anyways, all that said, you know, the refrigerator that is in here is the Samsung full residential refrigerator. Now, if we look at the information on this specific unit, you can see the model number right there. It's the RF18HFENBSR. This is an 18 cubic foot full residential refrigerator. This thing utilizes 320 watts, three amps, but it is a 115 volt refrigerator. So again, this is absolutely a residential refrigerator, something that you might get in, uh, in your home. And it's not the largest residential refrigerator, but they try to make do with what they can. And this has to be a counter depth refrigerator because if it extends, you know, way out here, like your typical, you know, full depth refrigerator, it's just not gonna fit when the slide is in. So they go to these counter depth residential refrigerators, whether it's Samsung, whether it's LG, um, or a few other brands. I think Furion makes one. But what you're starting to see more and more of in your larger RVs is residential refrigerators, right? And what you're starting to see a little bit of is a shift from a residential, this style residential refrigerator to a 12 volt residential style refrigerator. And to my knowledge, there's only one manufacturer who makes that and that's Everchill. So Everchill has a French door refrigerator. It's 16 cubic foot, so it's two cubic foot smaller than this. Um, and you can tell, I mean, you can just tell from the width that it's not quite as wide. It, it, I don't think it's quite as tall and it might not be quite as deep, but the depth I'm not 100% sure on, but you can definitely tell it's slightly smaller, but it's only two cubic feet. Now, when it comes to how much stuff you plan on cramming in your fridge in an RV, well, if you're living full time, you could very well pack this thing full. If you're planning on going on a long trip, uh, you could very well pack your refrigerator pretty full. Just keep in mind, do you have the cooling capability when you're on the road, right? If you're running something like this, you really have to have a pretty, uh, pretty solid battery bank. That way you can keep a inverter running and you have the ability to, to keep your refrigerator going. 
if you have solar and you can keep that maintained, then that's a really good thing. So you're seeing brands like Keystone, as well as many Forest River brands, many Thor brands that are actually including solar systems on their RVs just so you can keep a refrigerator going. Well, the alternative to that, of course, is a gas electric refrigerator, which I think is kind of a dying breed. Uh, most of the manufacturers who produced gas electric refrigerators have now transitioned to either 12 volt or 115, but most of them have transitioned to a 12 volt option. Um, and that includes Norcold and Dometic and several other brands as well. So one of the ways you can tell if you're looking at a gas electric versus a 12 volt, because the body from the outside may look very similar, is the lack of those radiator fins that you would see inside, those, those uh, stainless steel fins that essentially are what cool and transfer cold air to the freezer or in the refrigerator area, typically the refrigerator area. And as those cool down, they have a fan that transfers the air to the other part of the refrigerator. And the flow is really dependent on how cold you want the other area to be. But again, you're, you're starting to see a move away from gas electric into 12 volt refrigerators, especially for RVs and toy haulers that are designed for more of a boondocking environment. And in a lot of your travel trailers and your smaller RVs that traditionally didn't have any other option. They didn't really make a good option for those because either you tied up your, your power supply or sorry, your uh, inverter with your refrigerator by putting a large inverter in there or you just didn't have the option to put a smaller refrigerator in. Now, again, because of kind of this move from gas electric to residential and larger fifth wheels, you've now seen brands like Everchill produce a 12 volt residential option. And again, a little bit smaller overall form factor, but you are starting to see them in a lot more fifth wheels than you ever have in the past because it's a really solid option. Uh, when everything is said and done, and let's just say it has a max of 20 amps capability, let's say it's running amperage is maybe 10 amps off 12 volts, you're really only drawing maybe two to three amps off of your battery system at any given time whenever you're utilizing that refrigerator. So it pulls very little power. It doesn't pull a lot of power and it's easier to maintain directly off your batteries because you're not having to go through your inverter to actually run your refrigerator. So Again, the folks over at Everchill reached out to me and uh, they actually said, you know what, we, we see that you review a lot of RVs and you've seen a lot of our refrigerators in the RVs, but how would you like to test one? Now, here's the problem that I have. This is a pretty huge refrigerator. I know it's not huge compared to, you know, 25, 26 cubic foot refrigerators you might see in your home, but for an RV, this is a huge refrigerator. And the challenge often is, is removing and replacing a refrigerator. Now, I personally don't want to go through the task of trying to get this out so I could get a new refrigerator in. Because let me show you the challenge that a lot of people face whenever their large residential refrigerator goes out on them. See, your door right here has limited opening. And you could remove these doors, the drawer, all of this stuff, and it still is unlikely to fit through this opening and out that door. Now, we may be able to shimmy the thing out, simply because once we remove the doors, we probably have the ability to kind of push it through here, get part of it into the bunkhouse right here, and then get it out of the door. But it would certainly be a task, and it's definitely one that you don't want to find out you can't do when you're in the middle of doing it, because there's gonna be a big process to it. And we may even have to unbolt or unscrew the island, shift the island over so we can get out in the first place. But I don't think we'd have to do that. Simply, I think the, the key here would be to pull it out to about here, kind of rotate it this way, rotate it this way, and then walk it out through the door. Um, but again, that's not an option for a lot of folks. And I don't even know if this is gonna be an option for us if we chose to remove this. The second part of it is the opening how they framed this out is designed for a refrigerator this size. So if we throw a 12 volt refrigerator in here, it's very likely we're gonna have a gap all the way around it. Now from an efficiency perspective, that's probably a good thing because you're allowing the refrigerator to, to vent the hot air and cool down the way it should because all refrigerators with a compressor are gonna need to cool down and that air pocket that you have around it gives you the capability of doing that. This one has below uh, slots as well as on top and a few on the side, and this gives it the ability to adequately cool. If you have a gas electric, you're gonna have a vent on the bottom, a vent on the top, or even a vent on the very top, depending on the, the type of area that the refrigerator's located in. But all refrigerators need to be able to cool down when that compressor's running. Now, 
Again, if we opted to replace this with the Everchill 12 volt refrigerator, the most common option of getting one of these out of your RV is a very, very uh, stressful one for people to think about. And that's either popping out your back window or popping out one of your side windows to where you can actually get the refrigerator and put it on its side and worm it outside of a window. Not a very convenient way of doing things, especially considering how people feel about sealing up their RV and potential water leaks, right? I don't want to pop the seal on my windows remove the window to remove the refrigerator. In some cases, some you know dealerships who have had to replace these have removed entire slide outs so they could actually get easy access to removing and reinstalling a new refrigerator. So that's led to a lot of folks not really caring for residential refrigerators at times. Believe it or not, they actually have a pretty good track record in terms, in terms of longevity, in terms of how well they last and, and how well they perform in RVs. I mean, you can find several RVs, you know, dating back 10 years that have residential refrigerators in them that have lasted the entire time. Um, I would argue to say that in many cases, you probably have fewer actual warranty related issues with these than you would with your traditional gas electric that, you know, has all that ventilation in the back that can get dirt daubers in them and can potentially lead to a fire if you're not careful and they're not maintained. Um, with something like this, I think the biggest stress is when you do have to replace it, when you do have to work on it. It's so large that it becomes this cumbersome appliance that you have to remove from your RV and replace somehow. If you have an RV with with a large enough entry exit, well then that's not so much a concern. But in most cases, you don't have that luxury, unfortunately, and you do have to kind, kind of think of some alternative way of getting it in and out. So all that said, again, the folks over at Everchill said, you know what, we'd love to provide you some units to evaluate. I just don't think that our RV is going to be the, the format to evaluate it because I don't really want to remove this. It's been working really good we have it plugged in. We have a huge battery bank. We don't really run into a scenario where we won't be able to run this virtually all the time. We have enough solar on top of the roof. We Again, we have a large enough battery bank, big enough inverter. I can essentially keep this thing running nonstop without any issues. And I wanted to ask you all, do you want me to evaluate this Everchill refrigerator or a couple of them? Would you like us to? Um, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to do it in an actual RV environment, though. I'd probably have to set them up maybe around the cabin, maybe in a garage, and just you know connect them using a, uh, a power supply, 12 volt power supply, like a 20 amp um, you know bench style power supply, and just see how they perform. Because in the garage, you know, it gets upwards of probably well over 100 degrees because it's not air conditioned and it would give me the ability to test it in that type of an environment and see how cool it stays. Um, I could put a probe inside of it. I could check it out and, and kind of determine how well it performs because that's sort of an extreme environment because when you're in an RV, you know, ideally you're cooling your RV down when you're inside of it and the refrigerator becomes more efficient because it's not surrounded by all that hot air. If I throw it in a garage and I try to test it in there, well, we're really using it in a, in a harsh environment because it's never really going to cool down until the season becomes more cool in general. And down here in South Texas, you know, we get 100 degree days uh, probably six, seven, eight months out of the year. So it would certainly be what I would consider to be kind of an extreme test on that type of refrigerator. That said, though, um, I wanted to ask you all, what do you all think? Is this something you'd like to see? Would you like me to, to get a couple of the refrigerators and put them side by side and, and just kind of test them, really test them against this style of refrigerator or the style that, that you would typically have in your home? Or simply put a probe inside of it to see if it can maintain a, a really cool temperature even when the ambient temperature outside is really hot. So that's really the point of this video. I, I wanted to reach out to you all. I wanted to make it kind of informative in terms of some of the challenges you may have with the full residential large refrigerator like this, some of the reasons why the manufacturers have moved, but ultimately I wanted to talk to you about the manufacturers who produce these new 12 volt refrigerators. And I wanted to give you kind of, um, you know, the option of seeing, is this the type of content you would want to see? Would you want me to see if I can get one, put it in a static location inside of a, a hot garage, 
and just see how the thing performs over time and if I have any issues with it, how it performs, you know, when it's really hot outside and then as the season cools down, how it performs and from a longevity perspective, do we have any issues with it? So please leave a comment below. I'd love to know what your feedback is. Um, I don't want to just create a video on getting a refrigerator and showcasing this refrigerator in an environment that I don't really need one because believe it or not, I already have a compact refrigerator in the garage and, uh, and I really don't need to replace it. So this would simply be to provide you guys content and information on that refrigerator. Anyways, leave a comment below, let me know your thoughts. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very, very soon.